<laughs> and away we go. <laughs> And now, the moment you've all been waiting for, the one, the only, the Bradley Hall. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I want to welcome you to today's edition of the Bradley Hall Show. I am your host, the Bradley Hall. All right. Hi. As you've guessed it by now, I am the Bradley Hall. I wanted you to know that I am a certified trauma recovery coach and a certified mindfulness instructor and a certified holistic life coach. Now, what this means is that I am a trauma-informed holistic life coach with a focus on awareness, which is the first step to any type of personal growth. Let my 30 years of coaching and my experience overcoming trauma work for you. To work with me, go to my website, thebradleyhall.com. Look for the coaching tab in the upper right-hand corner. You can choose holistic life coaching or trauma recovery coaching. Anyone who ever accomplished anything had a great coach or a great mentor. You should too. You're worth it. Contact I'm me now. Proud to announce that today's episode, as well as every episode this month during NPE Awareness Month, is brought to you in partnership between the Bradley Hall Show and the NPE Friends Fellowship. You can find out more information at npefellowship.org. Hi, welcome back to another edition of The Bradley Hall Show. I am your host, The Bradley Hall. My guest today, her name is Carrie. Carrie and I became friends in the Facebook group, the NPE Fellowship, which is a group for people who take an at-home DNA test and discover that one or both of their parents are not, that they thought were their biological parents, are indeed, in fact, not their biological parents. And Carrie's joining us today to tell us about her discovery and her experience. So, welcome, Carrie. Hi, Bradley. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me on your show. Yeah, good. I'm 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 excited and glad you're here. Um, how are you uh, How are you holding up in the quarantine? Uh, it's been a little rough, but I think it's rough for all of us. So one day at a time, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I'm going a little stir crazy myself. I. I'm used to, I work out of my home, so I'm used to not going anywhere, but it's starting to really, really drag on me a little bit, I think. Um, but I, I, I think everybody's going through the same thing, don't you? Absolutely, yes. I mean, I'm working more than ever before, and uh, I have kids home that are homeschooling themselves at this point, and I come home and try to help them with things. So it's definitely a, a taxing schedule, and I'm, I'm look, like everyone else looking forward to it being yeah, over. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. Well, I've already been through your introduction. And uh, told people why 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 you are here. Um, June is uh, has been deemed NPE Awareness Month, um, which is cool. This is a really cool way to get started because I I approached Catherine with the idea for NPE Awareness Month, and she told me that she had started the group uh, in June, and so that June worked perfectly to have to make the whole month NPE Awareness Month. Absolutely. And uh, you were there for the beginning. Yes, I was. Yeah. So yeah. In, in the beginning, there were two, right? There was. Yes. So uh, I had found Catherine under a Delilah page where she had commented about her taking the test and finding out that her father wasn't her father. And uh, I was on my own in the beginning, just myself before, you know, when you looked up and you found out that you took this test and your father wasn't your father. And there was nothing. You could Google away. There was really little information out there. There was no group. There was nothing. And uh, I was just on Facebook and it was a Facebook post that Delilah, the radio host, had posted. And I'm scrolling through all these posts that people had written about saying, you know, it's it's not real. Don't believe in this fake science. And, and there's Catherine. And she writes, be careful 
what she do with this because you know I'd found out my father wasn't my father and I, I couldn't believe it. So yes, I find her and we chat, we chat, we chat, and it turns into you know there couldn't just be us on the planet. It can't just be the two of us. It's not possible. And there has to be more. And and there we are. The page got started, and you know, amazing. It was because it, it was really, um, it was the moment of feeling like there 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 couldn't be anybody else. I, I remember feeling so alone and finding Catherine was just life changing. And then comes the whole page and this bittersweet feeling like, look how many of us there actually are, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Actually. And I, actually, I think, um, at last count there's, I, I've got it right here. 7,258 members. Right. And, and you, me, were, uh, you were number two. That is just amazing. Yeah. It's fascinating. Yeah. I like hold your heart. Like, oh. yeah. Yeah. Oh. It's um. Th- did you think when Catherine, uh, when you and Catherine talked and she created the, the group, and th- did you think there would be over seven thousand members? No, we we absolutely said to each other. We both said, if we find twelve people, that would be amazing. If there's yeah. twelve of us out there, that would be incredible. And twelve is a number we we really were like hitting for. We just kept saying twelve, twelve. <laughs> yeah. I was like, wow, that's incredible. No. Yeah, I I was I think I was like th- I was like three hundred and eleven or something. <laughs> yeah and, and that was early on that was early yeah in the show. yeah that was very early um it, it was probably almost a year because i i think i joined uh i either joined in may or june and um obviously started in june the previous year it was but, hard to find people in the beginning because we were you know sure. very time promoting ourselves and figuring out how we could get people to trust us that was a big issue you know yeah. how we tell people that we are trustworthy people and we are true in what we say and so yeah but now it's yeah. a whole new ball game. Yeah, absolutely, and it's remarkable that in the first year there were three hundred. You gained three hundred people, and now um, how many years ago was it? It'll be three years ago. Three. Okay. Yeah, that'd be right because I, I've been number two years. Now we're mm-hmm. up to over uh, seventy-two hundred, and it's just it's mind-boggling. And then, it, what does the next three years look like? And what does a couple of years after that look like? And it starts yeah. to. It's almost scary to make you wonder. Yeah. Yeah. It's, for people to come <laughs> and so mm-hmm. it's neat that you were second uh you were right you were one and two with Catherine right there right. in the creation but I can tell you from my standpoint when I found out and I came in there were 300 people in there the immediate uh comfort I felt knowing that there were 300 people just like me mm-hmm. so I would imagine that when you found Catherine that was exciting but I I, I still think I have to think that because it, it gave you some normalcy, right? You found someone else, and then there was uh, there was someone else. Someone else came in to the group. But when I came in and there were three hundred people, I w- I was like, wow, you know, you take a breath, right? You yeah, breathe. right. And that was the goal. And I, that's the goal for this as well. That there's somebody out there and they could hear a story and they too could feel some normalcy. That's yeah. the whole purpose behind all of this, exactly. Yeah. Yes. No. There wasn't that in the beginning that there was, I felt like I was on an island. I felt like I was completely alone and, and there was not a single person who could understand yeah. or is that to ever be in my situation. And it was yeah. frightening. So how, how long did that go on before you met Catherine? How long um, did you know before you met her? I thank God it really wasn't as long as it could have been because I couldn't imagine. I got my results on June 3rd, uh, which is my son's birthday. And I met Catherine probably about, uh, it was about, I think, about 10, 12 days later um, that we okay. started. We, thank goodness it wasn't longer than that. And then the group was started about 10, 12 days after that, if I'm correct. Um, okay. I'm, I'm back on the days. I could be off. Catherine, Catherine I guarantee, knows better than I do. Yeah. Uh, but it was only days there that was a, a difference. Um, okay. But the first week or two for me was a traumatic time. Um, absolutely traumatic. I definitely did not handle any of this well um and even after that time i the first couple of months i probably uh the first six months or longer i I definitely suffered some pretty massive trauma for this and and the group was very helpful for me and it really did um help me start seeing that there were other were other people there and there were people going through trauma but i definitely think everybody handles that trauma differently and uh, without a doubt yeah Yeah. and and you know and and kind of understanding that Um, more now, you know, after hearing, you know, going on the cruise and speaking to some of, you know, hearing people talk a little bit more about their past and their childhood and things like that. And, and, you know, hearing other NPE stories that has been very helpful to me and hearing different levels of how, 
everyone handles it because it made me feel like oh, all right well maybe I wasn't for a while I was like maybe I'm the only one who really had a massive setback because yeah. definitely did well I, I just want to throw in here that that um it's not just a it's not just a support group on Facebook that uh, as you mentioned you, you and I met on a cruise I mean yeah. a group of us went together and actually spent time together and had an amazing time that's where we met each other yeah yeah which was it was for me it was really life-changing because that was the first time that I really had any sort of um, specific therapy based around um, the MPE situation um, and it really did change my thought process on it so good I good. needed that yeah <laughs> clearly I yeah I, I did too you know and um I, I, I mean, now I, I, this is your story and, and I don't want to make this about me, but I, I understand that that period you had from early June um, until you, you connected with Catherine. Um, I, I understand, I understand that. Now mine's a little different because I, I somewhat knew and then I found out and then I kind of, not that I didn't deny it. I just kind of put it off for a few months, but when I truly found out, um, it was a couple days, probably three days, five days, might have been seven. I don't know. You know, right. like you said, the time was just blackout right. time frame. Right. I understand. And I, and my my emotions were a roller coaster. I get I I get sad, and then I'd understand, and then I get angry, and I want to break stuff, and then I then I come to my senses again, and uh, and and my wife Michelle found an article about the group, uh, just a little blurb in the newspaper. Right. And, uh, and then that's when I logged on and instantaneously um, there was some some kind of relief when I, when I joined the group. And I don't, I had the privilege, there were enough people in there that I just kind of slipped in and just watched Listen. for a little while and just read mm -hmm. a lot of posts. And that was very, very therapeutic. And now with 7,000 people, I see a lot of people do that. You'll see people say, I've been in here six months and I haven't told my story yet. I think they're just absorbing everyone's stories. And, uh, and take which is it. wonderful, which is wonderful that they get to do that as well. It was funny. I had said to Catherine in the beginning, I didn't realize that she had had some of her personal friends join into the group. And I remember checking every day and I would start seeing new people. And this is in the first, you know, two weeks or three weeks. And I would see like this name and that name come into the group. And I was like, hi, I'm Carrie. And I would start to say something and Catherine would come and she'd go, no, they're just my friends. <laughs> and I was like, okay. <laughs> I was like, hi, Catherine's friend, you know? <laughs> No, I couldn't wait till there was somebody else. I mean, it was great talking together, but I couldn't wait for another person to come in so we so you could feel that there was still somebody else. And now you see like every day there's 20 new people. Yeah, I, it's hard to keep up. It it really is. It's, um, it, it's a remar remarkable. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I know. I don't know. I don't know where you want me to even go. Well, with. so you, did you, when you took your tests, did you have any idea? No. No, so no. this was a complete blind, you were completely blindsided, you had no idea. I had no idea in the world. Um, no, no clue. Nothing would have led me to the conclusion that this could even be a possibility in my world. Um, my uncle, my father's brother had done years and years and years of um, our family tree. And I had 15 cousins, but somehow the seven binders of information got given to me. And I, I have been carrying it around from house to house with me, you know, taking the best care of it because I don't want anything to happen to it. And one day I said, you know, I'm going to get an ancestry and I'm going to put all these binders of information online. And when I had done that, I just ordered the DNA kit because I thought he would love it. And uh, he would think this is so cool. So I ordered one and one for my husband at the time. And I thought, well, it'll be so, it'll just be great only because he would love it. And not that I was against it, but I really put no thought process into it whatsoever. Um, yeah. And we both got it and I spit in the tube and I just absolutely jokingly spit in the tube and clung, clung little tubes with, with my husband and said, you know, here's to new parents, jokingly. Wow. <laughs> um, mostly because I just had such a, a difficult relationship with my parents and I don't think I ever really did feel like I fit in. Um, but, you know, he brought that up to me when this all came out. He said, you know, you said that at that moment, don't you remember saying that? And, you know, it's like careful what you wish for because I was joking, like I was, I was kidding. Yeah. We mailed them off, and and his came back first, and the first thing I said was like, oh, you know, you match up the way you're supposed to, and I got to see how it all worked when his came in. So I really did understand, and mine came in the next day. And the only thing I matched up with was my mother's second cousin, 
but I didn't get it. Um, yeah. The nationalities were different and um, nothing matched on those 300, 400 years of family tree stuff I put in. And did I, the only thing I could think is like, oh, my poor uncle worked on all this year's worth of stuff. And um, look at that. Yeah. You know, the poor guy did all this work and he was like in the wrong tree, you know, all that work for nothing. Nothing made sense to me. Um, and, and, you know, I found out I was Italian and all these things I never were. So I called my mother and I, I started asking her questions and she just kept talking about herself, which she does. And she kept saying, I want to take the, the I want to take a DNA test. I want to find out. I was like, okay, well, that's great. She just kept changing the subject and, um, I said, how are we going to tell dad he's Italian? Is it you? Is it him? And she kept just nothing. And she had so many opportunities to just say something. And she didn't. Yeah. And then uh, finally, I you know saw the matches. And I wrote them. And I said, you know, can anyone help me out by explaining, you know, I never knew I was Italian. And, and they were all Italian. And uh, I didn't, you know, can anyone open a tree and maybe help me out? And a second cousin did. And and there was my parents' best friend's name, and okay, and that was it. So this is you know? this is someone you knew. Um, he had moved away when I was five years old, but my parents they kept in close contact with him. And um, my mother had put me on the phone with him till I was thirteen. He was on my Facebook. Uh, I had a professional picture taken with my now brother um when i was two years old that sat on my mantle my entire childhood wow. um I, I, he had mailed gifts and it like here they were it all this was just it's right in front, it was right in front it was hidden it in was, plain sight hidden it in plain sight it was right there i mean and i just i just felt so stupid because i mean it just became so obvious at that second yeah I mean, the man had just written, a, he had passed away three years before, but, you know, here I am looking at my Facebook memories, like he had just written like happy birthday on my Facebook wall and so many things that I had never even necessarily responded to because I hadn't seen him yeah. since I was five years old, you know, um, okay. he's nice to me. So do you, think he, do you think he knew? I know he knew. Okay. Yeah. Um, Are you, and you, can, you confirm that? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and his widow said that um, he, he was, he would have come to me and uh, he was just afraid that he knew I had a father and a mother and he was afraid to interrupt that world for me based on stepping in without knowing a hundred percent. Like they were pretty certain that I was his, but what if I wasn't? And what if he came in and said, I'm pretty sure I'm your dad, but what if your dad's your dad? And yeah. What if, you know, what if he said that he was wrong and blew up my life? For nothing and yeah it makes sense it does make sense um except that now that if you really look it's pretty obvious <laughs> like <laughs> i get it now I'm like come on i i, I think we all yeah, know the, when, the, you know, the hindsight with this is not 2020 it's 2015 i mean it we it's a i can't and and everyone me and and the people i know and everyone i interview i can't believe even though in my story, I can tell you, I, I did know to some degree. Now, I, I didn't, I wasn't cognizant of it, but I asked a lot of questions and I had a lot of things that didn't line up. And I don't know how I didn't put it all together. I, I just don't know how. And we, we see what we want to see, right? Well, there was a number of clues now that I look back at. Um, when my son was born, my, the blood type was off between me and my parents and my son and I I actually questioned at the time and I said how is it possible that my blood type is this when your blood type is that and my mother made it a point to say there was it's a clerical error um we're clearly now yeah you know it's just things now that I don't understand um it's not like me to not push for more answers but there was this was never on my radar so yeah. I didn't yeah. I really didn't get it but when you take all of this later and you line it all up, you know, you have to look back and say, what yeah, is yeah. My, mo my mother, when I had asked my mother uh, questions, she always used to uh, reassure me that I had my dad's feet is what she said. <laughs> I look nothing, I look nothing like my birth certificate father. Nothing, he's, he's just under six <laughs> feet tall. And, yeah, he has black hair and brown eyes and, and he's under six foot. We look nothing alike. <laughs> 
uh, and but you know, she assured me that I had his feet. That was oh, her. that's wonderful. Well, what was the problem? It was like a clerical error, right? <laughs> I um, I never. My dad, who raised me, I have a lot of respect for. Um, he's a really rough man. He's uh, he's he's difficult to get along with. He's very stern. He's not a man who's grown over time very much. Uh, so we have a very difficult relationship, and that's me putting it gently. Um, yeah. With that being said, you know, I never felt a big connection to him ever, but he has green eyes. And uh, when I was growing up, you know, my mother has blue eyes, my brother has blue eyes, we have green eyes. It was always very clear my father's side of the family has green eyes. I clearly am related to them. Yeah. And the moment that this happened, I went on Facebook and I pulled up the picture of my biological father and the man has green eyes and I went you've got to be joking me mom I said two men with green eyes in one month like how does this happen how does this happen? Uh, yeah. you know and but there we go you know this is it so like I that was the one thing that had me hold on I think if it wasn't for that if it wasn't for that I would stare at him and be like he's obviously my father and I remember even thinking it as a child like it's got it's yeah. got to be look at him I mean we're obviously related but yeah, you well, know, and like I said a minute ago, we see, people see what they want to see. And your yeah. results, for example, I had the same thing. Now, I, I had known, I had been told this was a possibility 10 or 15 years before I actually got my results. And I did, and when mm -hmm. I did the DNA test, I didn't know that that these results came with it. I was just looking for ethnicity results. And right. So even though, I, even though I had a suspicion and... Right. I still couldn't. It didn't feel like a test. I didn't realize. I was still trying to make the old stuff work. I was still trying to put the square peg in the round hole, and I was getting pissed yeah. that I couldn't get, get the peg in that hole. Um, it's because I had the wrong wrong peg all along, and, and I hear a lot of people say that. So I think it's just it's human nature, you know. We're trying to take what we have and what we know best, and trying to fit it all together and make sense with it. I don't think it makes right. you stupid think, at all. Going back to your, your, your yeah. question. No, but in retrospect, too, I think, you know, being able to look three years out, too, the moment I gave credit to what was really happening, the moment I really understood yeah. that, you know, my father wasn't my father and this, this other man was, the world came out from under me. And I had to, I had to acknowledge that. So it was, it was emotional. It was emotionally exhausting. Like I, I went into yeah. like a spin and, and so up until then, it was easier to say, like, I guess I'm Italian, and now I'm I'm a little bit Polish, and I'm all these other things. Like, it was easier to take credit for all this new information than it was to even begin to imagine that these other things were not, like not true. You know, I could I could try to talk my dad into being Italian, which there's no way he is. But that was easier than to start to begin to imagine that my father wasn't my father. I couldn't grasp that concept at that yeah. point. Yeah. Um, so uh, that was that was a crazy moment. But seeing his seeing my um, my biological father's name in, in this woman's tree, I I wrote her back, and uh, I still I I knew, but I, I I had to be sure that that man was the man we were talking about. You know, what, like this was the same person. And I said, you know, it was right. he born in New Jersey and and passed away in Hawaii. Like she didn't answer me till the next day, and she said yes, and, and she said, how were we related? And I said, like in ways I never imagined. Um, yeah. And that's when I, I called my mother and uh, and I said to her, um, I said, you know, Ma, I didn't want to even say that my father was my father because I was too afraid what if I was wrong. Like I still didn't even think maybe I thought right. maybe they were related some other way. I, I, I still want to give it credit. Like maybe I was wrong. So I just said, um, you know, I know I'm related to Glenn. I just wanted to leave it at that. Like maybe, you know. And she said, really? I always thought daddy was your daddy. And that was wow. it. Like, so she told on herself. <laughs> told on herself. Yeah. Like a child walking in and saying, I don't know what happened to the cookies. You know, with no one asked you about cookies. <laughs> <laughs> right. And like, I just, I went down to my knees. Like, I, I remember I just fell to the ground. Like, I couldn't even believe it. Because, right, I, I didn't know what she was going to say. I, I, I thought maybe she said, I didn't know. I wanted to give yeah. her some credit that she would say like, Oh yeah, he's our second cousin. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I just, I like became violently ill before that phone call was over. I just started getting sick. I couldn't even believe this was really happening. Um, but I do think, you know, the credit to the fact that I had a really rough childhood and, and 
and she had kind of sent me away as a child. Um, and I do think it had a lot to do with this situation. I think she wanted me out of the picture before anyone else figured it out, you know, before anyone else realized that maybe I don't look as much like my father's side of the family as yeah. everyone thinks. And grew up in, there's, we come from a very small town and uh, you know, a lot of the family's still in town. And, you know, all of them are very tall and athletic and, you know, um, maybe someone's going to notice. You know? yeah. <laughs> maybe, should, maybe I should get you out of here, you know. And now, do I you think, think that, you're a person that your father knew? Uh, no, he didn't know. He had no idea. No, he had idea. no idea. Does he know now? Yes. Um, I had called my uncle a year later and told my uncle the story and wanted his opinion on whether or not I should tell him. My uncle got really upset and said, it's his right to know. I think he needs to know. Um, and my uncle said, you know, please let me call him and tell him. And I allowed my uncle to do that. I think it, to this day, at least so far, two years later, it's a huge mistake. Um, telling him. Really? It's, yeah, oh. he's not handling it well. Um, he's, he still, basically, he's still not dealing with it well? No, no. He basically will say things to me like, you know, I'm not your father you know, that's your father. And, you know, yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't take, it's rough. Yeah. He's still working through it. I'm trying to give him the credit. I'll say to him, Dad, like, you are my father. You're the only father I've ever known. You know, I found this out at 41 years old. At what point can we not call you my father? Like right. your, your friend's not here. Okay. And if he was, you know, maybe we could have another, I, I don't know what you want to say, but you're the only father I've ever had. Yeah. So like, let's, let's, let's not be crazy, but He's having a very hard time with it. You know, he feels very duped as we all do, um, right. you know, and, and, and as much as I understand and appreciate that, and I do, and you do, and we all do, um, and betrayed. And I told him, you know, we just have to heal and try to move past this. Like we're still a family and, and you're still my father and I'm still your daughter and, and we, need to, we need to learn to grow past this. But he, he can't, I think he's very, this, he's very big on blood relations and, this, he's not he would have never adopted and I know that about him and I I really think that's pretty much what he's getting at you know but I'm, yeah. I told him like it's kind of too late <laughs> like you already did it so yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. I'm here to stay you know you're gonna have to deal with it but it's we're two years later and I don't know that he's gonna really move that far yeah. beyond so. yeah that's too bad I'm sorry to hear that yeah yeah it's, it's a rough it's definitely been a rough transition yeah you know? I am um... The interesting, I want, I want to talk to you a little bit about your mother because you and I have this in common. Yeah. Um, and my, my mother didn't, denied it. The, the interesting thing about this is that there's a lot that I haven't wanted to say about how things went down with my mother. So now I'm, now I'm to the point, I don't care. You know, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm going to speak the truth. So your mother has has she has she acted like she didn't know um i uh, we only had that one phone call and then that's she it? never spoke to me again um, okay. that's it um and then after that i don't i the only thing i know is that she spoke to my brother once and said if you heard her say anything well i guess she said something along the lines of don't believe everything you hear hmm. and I don't know what she puts out to people because I, I haven't okay. heard a lot back. Um, but basically, her, I don't, I don't, I, I guess people are, don't tell me what she says anymore. Um, but she, she basically just bad mouths me to the world for the most part, and and that's how it's been my entire existence. And and I know that you know, I know what it's like to have somebody just walk around and basically doesn't matter who they run into, it's going to be something negative. And I try to warn people, like I'm used to that though. That's been my whole life. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. What yeah, and, and so and, and that really was my point. My point was going was actually going to go to the deception. That yeah, well, that's I, I want people to understand right. how the this isn't just this isn't just like oh you found out you were adopted or or something. No, it's this living is, the ultimate betrayal. Someone has intentionally withheld extremely important information about our identity, and not not just to us, right? My father paid child support on me for 11 years. My birth certificate father paid right. child support on me for 11 years. I, right. I wasn't his child. Right. He should have been told I wasn't his child, even though he suspected. Right. Know, 
but he suspected. And what, what are you going to do with that? You know, the technology wasn't there when I was 11. Right. You know, I, I can't imagine how much in, the, in right. the 1980s, how much a DNA test cost. You know, that was just unfathomable, I think, probably, well, I think. Right. Um, well, my, my, my biological father, I was told that uh, he, was, he was told that my mother was going to tell me when the time was right. And that was sometime in the 90s when my parents were getting a divorce. And I guess the time was just never right for my mother. So that never happened. On the flip side, when you talk about technology, my birth certificate, I mean, my biological father was a detective. So if anyone had access to DNA test, it would have been him. Yeah. And uh, I, th I find that a little frustrating when I spend a little time thinking about it, because uh, it was when I went to when I went to Maui and visited the family, it was actually asked if there was ever by his first wife, if there was ever a DNA test performed. Yeah. And I, I not to my knowledge, I mean, you know, yeah. I yeah. was a child. So, but he was, power, you know. he was powerless. I mean, we, we, you talked about that in the beginning. He really felt like he didn't have any power, I, that he had power, but the power he would have used could have been disruptive and really ruined a lot of people's lives and sound like he mm -hmm. didn't. Right. And, but it's, you know, when you know that the mothers hold the, the ability to to hold that betrayal over all of us, you know, and, and that is, it is, yeah. it is the ultimate betrayal. You know, you really don't know yeah. what your life could have been like if someone told you the truth. And that's no, all we all no. wanted was it, just the truth. Yeah. 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 And, and my mother is telling people that she had no idea that, that I blindsided her with the information, which is not true because I had several conversations with her over the years where I, where, where I asked her. And then I point blank asked her after my first significant father told me that he suspected that I, I wasn't his. Uh, that was 15 years ago. And uh, then when I got the initial results, um, I confronted her and she blew up again. And uh, then when I told her the truth, she blew up again. Now she's telling people that she was, that when I told her that I knew before she did and I blindsided her and that we all have withheld this information, you know, making herself the victim. And that's, that's a narrative we're playing because it's easier to do that than admit that you right. deceived a, your son uh, you deceived another man who who died wondering if he he didn't have any other children, so he died he, he he died wondering if he had a child, because he suspected. And she told me he suspected that he had shown up and asked about me, and then you dece deceived another man who paid child support on a child that wasn't his for eleven years. So it's easier to pretend like like nothing happened. Um, and right. we we hear this right. a lot in the group, right? I mean, th right. this seems to be we a do. common theme. It is a common thing, and and I think the two, you know, as parents ourselves, we really do know better, and we really do know that we put our children first. And I think when you really are a parent, you really can step out of it and see that when your child is hurting, when you're a good parent, right, <laughs> right, you can step. Out well, and and so what is the, 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 my wife brought up a good point. Michelle brought up a good point. She said there is no woman. <clears throat> who carries a child and gives birth to a child and has no idea it belongs to another man. I and don't think that you couldn't suspect there's an issue. Like I, it never happened to me, but I can't imagine that you don't go with, there's a problem here. There's definitely yeah. I have a concern. I, and you I, may I not be sure. That. I'm with you. Yeah. Yeah. You may I not be positive, but you have, you right. have a reasonable suspicion to some degree. Yeah. I'm with you. <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah. And the only reason I'm bringing this up is because I, I, I don't know, I don't know who's listening to this point, right? But I don't, people need to understand that this is serious. I mean, that this emotionally cripples people, right? Right. Would, would you say no. that, would that this has been emotionally <laughs> crippling for you? Absolutely. You, yeah. I, I wish, and, you, I wish I could say it a little, yes, absolutely emotionally crippling, at least for the first six months to yeah. a year, yeah. And I can't imagine how hard it is for a woman to admit that she got pregnant by another person. I, I'm sure it's incredibly right. difficult. I can't even begin to fathom it. But at some point, you have to realize you have that as hard as that you're is, pretty, right? You you're have your to, child. You, you're affecting so many other people, right? And, and doing right. such long-term damage where if you I, just own it. Right, yeah. right. And it's not about your situation or living in your best situation or what's going to, where would I, which house would I prefer to live in? Or this is, you know, this person makes more money or this makes more sense for me. It legitimately comes with what makes, wh who is this child? What, what makes the most sense for yeah. this child? I mean, that yeah. really is what it comes down to. And I don't understand what doesn't make sense about that. It's very yeah. confusing to me. And my uh, parents were very young and I, I can appreciate that, but I was very young when I had my first child too. And yeah. you know, his life first. So 
and I it's also you. it's also important to, to th that we point out, you know, because uh, I want to make sure we cover all angles here. That I don't know. I don't know what age you you tell people, right? I mean, I, I don't. I don't know if agreed. You know, my my parents divorced at seven. Was seven the right time? Probably not. But but and that and I'm just talking about me now. I mean, you've got my birth of your father who paid support on a child that wasn't his. So I, I don't know that answer. But you know, but whether it's seven or it's thirteen or it's sixteen right. or it's eighteen or it's twenty one. It damn sure ain't 41, right? No, I think the earlier, the better would have been better personally, but you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, at 18 and 21, we, we, have, we have a legitimate argument about the, the child is now an adult and has the right to know. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and so anything beyond that, in my opinion, is inexcusable. There is no, I was waiting for the right time. Right. I, I, well, I can't apparently the story I was told was after my parents were getting a divorce and I was 28 at that time, um, my biological father actually told his wife that now my mother would tell me because my parents were getting a divorce and this was appropriate okay. timing. There was no reason he said that my mother wouldn't tell me now. But I know my mother was getting alimony for the next 10 years. There was no way my mother would have told me then. And I, yeah. it was just such a kick when I heard that because I thought, well, if he really understood that my father now had to pay my mother, yeah, this all would have been canceled out had that been yeah. found out. I wish somebody would have told me any yeah. of this because I would have told <laughs> you what would have happened. But you know, yeah. And the second point I'd like to make, since we're on this, is that no matter how long it took someone to tell their child or not tell their child. When the time comes, just confess to it. Right. My, my, no, really. My, just my mother fought back so happen. hard and blamed everybody else. She still has not to this day, to me, just admitted it. Now, I think she's right. admitted to other people because that plays into her story like, you know, they're, he's hurting me and he's punishing me or whatever, which is not the case. Um, I do wish I knew my mother's story, I'll be honest, because to me, I, I know we feel like these stories are so black and white. I'm so confused when they're, when you hear like your mother's story and you hear another side, like what, how, what is even is the other angle? I don't know my mother's angle. I'm, I'm probably happy that I don't, but um, yeah. yeah, every once in a while we'll hear a story on the, on the DNA page where you'll hear that somebody's mother came to them and just apologized just simplistically yeah. apologized and said, you know, I'm so sorry. And I just wanted to come to you and say that after all this time, I, yeah. I never meant to hurt is what happened. And I should have just come to you sooner. So I'm sorry. And it can just be that simple. And it, it's such a relief. And you think, why is this only like 5% of the mothers do this? <laughs> yeah. I know yeah. it must be so pent up and, and emotionally exhausting, but just, just say you're sorry. Like we can appreciate that. It would just be amazing to do yeah. it. Yeah. And and, you know, my mother is, is telling people that I'm blaming her, I'm judging her for, for her, the affair that she had that caused me. And, and, and I've talked to so many people, and all of them say that that thought never even crossed their mind. That they, right. that people how, are people. You weren't even there. How could that have anything to do with any, like, that has nothing to do with me or you or anyone? Uh, I wasn't there. Uh, yeah, you, you were 20 some years old. You had a, a bunch of weird shit going on in your life, you know, and you were young and you were making poor decisions. Like I haven't made poor decisions. I, right. I've got, I've got a stack of them. If you want to go through them, right. uh, that, that doesn't bother me at all. That's between those three people. That has nothing to do with me, Right. but my identity has everything to do with me. And I had the right, right to know. All I wanted was the truth. The truth is the truth. That's all I want. And that's, Amen. you know, that's it. I mean, right. Amen. So you do it again? Would you take? Would you take it? Knowing what you know now, would you? Would you take it again? Three years out, absolutely, because I think there's so many questions answered within my life now, and and I again retrospect, you can really see things from a different angle and a different perspective now. And I think I've grown so much in this time, and and you know I can look back at all the trauma that the last three years have caused in my life and say I am a different person now, and I'm I'm happier on the other side of it, and I I feel stronger I think um and I, I I'm happier knowing what I know and I'm definitely happier knowing the truth um I didn't know that the day the week the month the six months figuring it out but uh yes I I'm happier knowing and I I think that most people are and I'm always confused by the few who 
say they aren't, but, uh, you know, yes, I, I definitely would do it. Well, and I think that's, I think most of those people are, they're in the early stages of, of their, their journey right now. I'm all, I've always been the person that I, I want, I want to know the truth. I want to know what's going on. Uh, I've always right, been that too. way and even more so in the last 15 years as, as I've really, I had some other traumatic things that happened um, and, and mm -hmm. caused some growth. But I think some people really are never forced with that. And, and then right. all they want to do is go back to the way things were. And, and the way life works is we can't ever go back the way right. it's ever. And right. living in that past um, just causes causes more damage. And but I think most of these people that you're talking about, and I I posted a question in the group the other day. I know you saw that. Yeah. Tremendous response. Um, and there were a lot of people said they wouldn't, but I have to believe that three years out, the, they they'll probably have a different answer. Right. Yeah. No, I'd ask. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think you're right. So what do you think was the hardest part of this for you? I'm trying to wrap my head around it, I think, in the beginning. Um, and I don't know if you had this response at all. I think for the first <laughs> for the first three months, maybe, I would wake up in, in the morning in the middle of the night. And, uh, you know, my husband at the time was sleeping next to me. And I would tap him on the shoulder and say, like, this isn't real, right? This, am I dreaming? This wasn't, I, I couldn't grasp it. And I, I would, he would, and he would roll over and say like, nope, it's not a dream. It's really real. It's still happening. <laughs> like I really couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't encompass it. Like I couldn't get it to be part of me. It felt like I was going to wake up and that was yesterday. This is today. That really didn't happen. It still isn't part of me. Is my dad still my dad? I, I don't, I, I really couldn't, I just couldn't get it. Um, it was crazy. And then, you know, the next part too was that looking in the mirror thing. You know, I think we all do that where you just yeah. stare, stare at yourself. And I, you know, that's that part of the when people just keep asking you, if it's, <laughs> what does it really matter? Does it really matter? Like, I don't know. I'm staring at myself in the mirror like five hours a day while knowing who I look like. I, I'm thinking some parts of this really do matter. You know? yeah. um, but that, you know, really wondering about your identity is, is a real true you know, I, suddenly I looked like my grandmother. And when I went to Maui and I, I met all my new relatives and I walked into the room to meet my grandmother, they said, we're not introducing you to her because we don't want to scare her. We don't want to upset her. We're, you're just going to come in and you're going to be the next door neighbor. And I said, you can make me anyone who you want. I don't care who I am. That's yeah. fine by me. I just, the privilege of meeting her. Thank you. And we walked into the room and she looked right at me and she said, who is she? Don't tell me she's your neighbor. That's not true. And she kept saying she looks like grandma. I thought they told me she had dementia. So I was like, I don't know what she's talking about. But apparently she was saying I look like her mother. And they said, don't. Wow. She kept saying, don't lie to me. She looks like grandma. Um, who is she? Don't tell me the truth. And she knew right away. She grabbed my hand and kept pulling me close. And she said, you, you have my eyes. Who is she? Tell me the truth. Wow. Like, in that first second. And like, I really do look like them. I see it. This is incredible, you know, you, you know, you hold this back your whole life and then come back home and you're back staring in the mirror and going, my God, I really do look like, you know, my grandmother. I see it. I see it. I yeah. see it. This is some crazy stuff. So, and then, you know, the next second people go, are you sure it really makes a difference? Because <laughs> yeah. yeah, it doesn't that, matter. All this new family stuff does make a difference. I promise. That whole, your dad, you know. your dad is your dad thing. And I, I, I've been through that and people don't understand. And, and I love. I love my dad. Um, right. He, he's the one. He's the one that told me. Uh, right. He suspected. No, my he father supported me through this father. whole. He supported me more right. than anybody through this whole thing, you know. And he didn't have to. Um, he's un he's understood when I went to meet my my family, but but when I went to meet my, you know, I got on Facebook. All of a sudden, the word got out, and next thing you know, I have ten friend requests from people that look just like me. They're just they're just my people, you know. Right. And I can't, I can't, that is something you just can't explain to people who've been around their people their entire lives, you know? <laughs> right, right. Just, well, you know, there's that too. I, I, I think I find my, uh, I found where my anxiety and my, there was like a little bit, I talked to them and I'm like, they get me. I get it. I see it. I understand. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, thank you. Thank you. I finally, I finally understand where I come from. I just, yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> Amen. I feel better because uh, everybody I grew up around just didn't get it at all. Yeah. I don't know. And there's nice. a lot. There, there's a lot of relief in that. Unfortunately, there's a lot of people in the group who don't get what you and I have that the 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 biological family um, doesn't want anything to do with them, and they don't get that satisfaction of, of at least connecting with their people and maybe not even having a relationship. I don't even want to go that far, but um, right. I do want to acknowledge those people because um, that makes it even more traumatic in my opinion, having, having my biological family uh, accept me to some degree, it just acknowledge right. that I was, right. that I am part of the family that I do all my, right. that that was critical in, in my recovery from this. Um, I do agree, you know, and I, mine live halfway around the world and I don't get to see them and spend time with them very often, but I think even just that little bit is yeah. life altering. Life altering. I don't care who you are. And you know yeah. it to be true. You know? Yeah. 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 And I just, anybody who's listening that hasn't had that, I, I want, I want them to know that my heart goes out to them because um, I can't imagine having to deal with that on top of everything else. It, it right. Just, and every day is a new day. And like you pray that the other family or something will come around one day and that they'll have a change of heart because you never really do know if that will happen. Yeah. 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 And most of the stories, well, I don't want to say most, that's a little bit of an exaggeration, but a lot of the stories I've heard uh, when that happens, there always seems to be one person who's curious enough that finally breaks through and, and creates a contact. Right. And then that person ends up becoming a catalyst that the mm -hmm. rest of the family or most, most of the family eventually comes around. Uh, right. So I'd be curious to see what, you know, take a poll and, and, uh, and check out in the group to see who's had that kind of thing happen. Right, and how much, like what a year can do, you know, this time next year, it can be totally different and you just have to have some faith because when this first started for me, I was told, you know, don't reach out to the older brothers. We don't want to upset them. They won't handle it well. And then eventually, and I'm not one to make controversy. I just wrote letters and I put in a picture of myself and, and the older brother together as babies in a crib. And I said, you know, yeah. if there's anyone who could just uh, maybe have some contact and chat. And they were like, well, we got that letter. We knew exactly what you were writing about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I, I, I didn't think that they would know. I thought I was kind of secretive about yeah. it, but um, apparently yeah. they, they picked up on it. So, uh, and they didn't contact me for six months after they got the letter, though. They didn't know what to do with it. So for six months, I sat quiet and waited. And then they finally called. So it was a very long six month wait on that but I just yeah. stayed patient so sometimes I think you do just have to wait it out and that ended up with me flying to Maui and meeting them all so you know it, it ended up okay in the end awesome, just awesome. Have to and then uh, then waiting six months it is another example of just how heavy this is yes I mean these yes, are people that it wasn't it wasn't I mean it, it indirectly affected them of course and almost almost make an argument for directly but it wasn't like I mean you're the main party involved it still affected them to the point where they, they well, needed time to process. Right. And, and that was my thought process. You know, everybody needs time to process. Everybody needs processing time. So I think it's my best, uh, it was the best thing for me just to sit quiet and let them have their processing time and not push. Because if I push, well, then where am I? I'm not going to get anywhere right. here. So, so that's what I did. And I waited it out. And uh, it felt like forever I was pretty sure he was never going to call and then one night he just randomly called and 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 chatted with me it was great um and what he ended up saying to me was uh dad always joked that he had other kids out there so when we got your letter we weren't even that shocked and you know really you could be one of more to come I mean honestly I check that ancestry and that 23 and me every day I'm like you know maybe I have five new brothers um maybe I'll get a sister one day who knows like yeah, <laughs> yeah. Know. yeah there's a there's a rumor that I have a brother Oh, see. Yeah. As a matter of fact, my uncle. Uh, I think my uncle initially thought that I was the uh, the other child. I don't. Think, I, he I said that he had heard about me, but as as I think he's old. He's he's older, and I think the memories are kind of running through. Him. They're bleeding together a little bit. And he, right. so he initially told me that he that he expected this. It wasn't a big deal. But as I, the more I've talked to him, I think he's talking about the other person. Oh my respects. I think I think there's a there may be another which <laughs> oh is I actually think I know who it is so um that there's more to come on that uh, you know what? I reached out to him he, yeah I've reached out to him he says he that he denies it but he says he knows the story and he has some things to tell me I don't know what that means oh. um but you know I'm 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 eager to find out I haven't been able I, I haven't been able to find out because I've been dealing with with this and my own stuff and 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 getting it together and then obviously putting 
putting this podcast together to try to mm-hmm. help other people. But I'm looking but forward very to uh, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to it. And at this yeah. point, at this point, my life has changed so much through this. Yeah. And I've grown so much. I don't care. I, I don't care if eight more brothers and sisters pop yeah. up. I don't care. It, well, it's that's it's life. This is the way it works. This has been going on for thousands and thousands of years. It's just that they could hide it because they didn't have the technology. So I'm just like, bring it on. I don't care. Right. And like nothing, I don't want to say nothing because don't try to shock me, but like almost nothing shocks me anymore. You know, like almost, yeah. almost nothing. So, you know, <laughs> you know, within reason, but you know, we have to like, okay, try to throw something crazy at me. I'm like, oh, we'll see, you know, it, yeah. should, it should be okay. No, I'm excited for you. That's great. I yeah. keep checking. We'll Any new siblings today? Well, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Is there anything we haven't covered that you want to cover? What's your thoughts on timing and that everything happens for a reason? Like, what is, what's your thoughts on that whole theory? So uh, that's a tough, that's a tough question. I've been struggling with this personally, and I just wanted your, your thoughts on it. I, I, I I go back and forth and I don't, I don't know. And the reason that I don't know is because I'm not worried about making a decision on that one way or the other, because I think what's important is, is whether everything happens for a reason or life only gives you things you can handle or God wants to challenge you or whatever the case may be. There are certain similar explanations that fall in that. I think or it just randomly is just happening. It doesn't matter because through all those things, it's an opportunity to grow. And without adversity, there is no growth. And so I'm not, I'm, I, I, I'm being evasive, but I don't mean to be evasive. I don't know that it's really important. I mean, it's the one thing that I definitely got out of the last three years absolutely was a whole lot of growth so you know, yeah. <laughs> i can take that as a definite um yeah so we can go with that as the answer yeah and and that brings me to to what i wanted uh, what i wanted to bring up is that um the change out of this is remarkable and because when our identity is created by the things we agree to believe in as we're growing up. Right. Right. You had your dad's eyes, you, Mm -hmm. you know, you had, I had my dad's feet, Mm -hmm. you know, and then I would go, I would go to family get togethers and, and I would adopt behaviors and sayings that my grandmother would say, or my grandpa or my cut and I hang out with my cousins and, and I would adopt all these pieces and I'd meld them together and create who I wanted to be. And I don't think people really look at that we do that. We just do it unknowingly because we're a child, but we're stacking all of these things together. Everything our friends say, everything we see on TV, everything our gym teacher says, everything our English teacher says, everything our friends say on the bus, everything, we pack it all together and this is who we become. Absolutely. And then all of a sudden you get a piece of paper that says, well, you're not really, this half of you isn't really what you thought it was. Yeah. And then then you, so I think people have a hard time with that because they don't understand the first part of that, where, where they, they agreed to create who they were. Yeah. I completely identify with what you're saying. Yeah. And people, and, and people, pro, and our parents, and as parents, we program our kids, right? You mm-hmm. know, you, you've got my smile, you got my intelligence, you got, you mm-hmm. know, your father's sense of humor, whatever the case may be. Yeah. And so I think the biggest, a big shock comes for people because they don't understand that as detrimental as it is, you created who you were the first time. Now you have new information to recreate who you are. Right. And it's still going to hurt and it's still going to be extremely painful, but it's going to be more accurate than it was before. It's going to be right. more truthful. It's going to be based in, in. And it just takes a long time to grow into that. And so one of the things that um, I thought about one day while I was driving in the car, you know, because I think that's a place that I end up being very emotional because I'm very alone, (laughs) you know, usually when I'm driving, but, uh, you know, trying to come up with the whole identity thing and recreating my identity in my mind, it was um, that I really was this person since conception. And uh, that was a real eye-opening moment for me because, you know, who am I? 
what am I exactly, you know, what is this, how does this change me? And, and so we were who we were since the moment of conception. It was just understanding this new person that we're learning the truth about ourselves. And really yeah. that's what actually changed. Like what you're saying, it's the truth yeah. of what we understand about ourselves was the difference. And I think it was the first time that I could like take a break on this, you know, like, okay, wait a minute. Like, so I really am exactly who I am. And, and, you know, I just have to understand all the changes and, and, and just give myself a moment to breathe on that. And I can now pick the pieces yeah. just like you're saying on, on who I want to be and, and make sense of it. And because for four, a few minutes, like I, it was that everything is different. Everything has changed. And, and yeah. then in some it's like, no, it hasn't. Some of those things have changed. Not all of yeah. them. Yeah. You know. And I, I don't know how you felt, but I, when I was growing up, you know, my, my dad, my dad was a mechanic. He liked to work on cars and he was very, very good at it. And uh, my dad was in, he's retired military, retired army. And he, I was, I was nothing like him. And as a little boy, you, you know, you want to be like your father as a child, you want to emulate your parents. Right. And I didn't, I, I not only wasn't good at it, I didn't care. And so I thought something was wrong with me because oh. I, I was this, the weird black sheep that didn't fit in here. Uh, and and it's because the person that I probably did have a lot in common with was a person that I, I never got to meet. And so that incongruence as a child is, is, is detrimental too. It does a lot of, uh, 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 it changes your personality to a degree that can't be measured by any stretch of the imagination, whether people are, are cognizant or not cognizant of it, will never know because you'll never know how much you and your biological father are alike or not alike. You'll never really, uh, you have what people are telling you Right, but, but you can only never really know. Well, I, I feel exactly the same way. My my dad is um, not a people person on any level. He's uh, he he doesn't socialize or have any friends, and he could never understand. We we never saw eye to eye on any level. Um, he doesn't like what I do for a living. Like I'm a caregiver for a living, and I take care of uh, senior disabled and dementia patients. And um, he can't stand that I do that. Uh, he finds it very there's a lot of negative words to say that I, I can't even actually repeat his words, but he doesn't like what I do. Um, but for an example, as a child, when I would well, hold the door, I think it, I think it's very admirable. Thank I you. I'm trying to actually find words to repeat some of the words that he says, but he you doesn't like, it doesn't oh, it's no, I can't like even, I, but I was going to use another example that as a child, I would hold the door for someone, you know, on the way out of a store and I would end up holding the door longer. And he would say that that's just like you to hold doors forever. Cause that's who you are as a person. You'll just hold the doors forever. Yeah. Um, and he would be very negative about that type of behavior. I found out that my biological father took care of his dementia. His grandmother had dementia until the day she died inside their own house. And it just probably like, held the door for. I probably held the door for everybody. He's a police officer and apparently he's a really good person and everybody liked him. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> it blew my mind. And so I think of, and, my, and that, that illustrates my point. Think about the positive reinforcement you might have gotten. Now right. I, I want to be, I want to be careful here because, because through the butterfly effect, any one thing changes in your life, everything changes right. and we're not sitting here. And I tell right. people all that people like, you know, I can't believe this is happening. And I was like, well, I can't believe my mother had an affair and this is horrible. And my father, no. and I'm like, wait a minute, you don't get to choose your father. Your mother doesn't have an affair. You're not here. We're not having this conversation. Absolutely. And with that being said, we wouldn't be sitting here today if this didn't occur. And, and I'm, I've thought about that too. And I'm not wishing any of that away or we wouldn't be right. having this conversation. Exactly. Right. So that's, that is meant, that was meant to happen. Yeah. And, I, and by the same yeah. token, I know and have said plenty of times that if, let's say my mother tells me when I'm seven, tells my, my, my birth certificate father. Right. And let's say he doesn't want anything to do with me. And then she tells the other guy and he doesn't want anything to do with me. Right. Right. Then I don't have any father. Right. Or let's say, let's say all of a sudden he does, he does want to have something to do with me. So now my sisters go to my birth certificate father's house on the weekends and I go to this father's house on the weekend and maybe he's not a nice guy or, or has a, 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 a witchy totally girlfriend or something. There's the so back. many variables that we can't control. Very that true. All we can do is just accept we things the way they are. We can the process to think it would have been wonderful. And yes. yeah, we, it's very Delusion. childish. And yes, right. Very true. It I could have been wonderful, but it could have been a disaster just as easily. Yeah, that is true. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, well, I'm glad, I'm glad, I, I, I tell you what, I, 
when we met on the cruise, which was almost a year ago, um, you've come a long way since then. Yeah, that was a rough time for me. Yeah. Yeah, I had a lot going on at that point. Um, and I was at a really low point then. And there has been a lot going on. But the cruise was extremely helpful for me. And I'm really but, glad I went. Mm -hmm. Thank I'm, you. I'm glad you went too. I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad we got a chance to meet. Mm -hmm. I, I just wanted to, I mean, I, w I, w I just wanted to tell you that I see a, a remarkable difference from the time we met almost a year ago in, until now. Um, and, and I'm happy to see that. I mean, you, you look, you look good. You look, you look like you. Right. I am. It's been a long process, good. but thank you. Good. <laughs> it is a long process and it's, uh, it's not one that has a finish line. Right. You know, we, we keep going. we're always leveling. That's right. We're always leveling up. I think people think if I, if, the, if I just do this or this or this, I'll be happy. And it never really works that way. I mean, it's always a work in progress. We always have to, to work on ourselves. We can't be stagnant. So, um, but anyway, I, uh, I appreciate you. I'm glad, I'm glad you joined me today and, and are telling your story. It's liberating to tell your story, isn't it? Absolutely. Yes. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate you having me on the show. You're, you're more, you're more than welcome. Um, okay. Well, I'm going to, I'll let you go. And, um, you know, if you need anything, let me know. And uh, we, we're we going to release this in June uh, here in a couple of weeks. And uh, we're going to have Catherine as well. She's going awesome. to say that. I meant to say that earlier when we were talking about Catherine. Catherine Sinclair is the founder of the DNA MPE Fellowship, um, the group that we were talking about. So she, we'll have her and uh, Paulette. It's going to be back. So we got a, we got a, a big, long list. We're going to try to do June upright. So. Oh, it's going to be great. Festivities. Awesome. Thank you. That sounds good. Yeah. All right. Good. All right. Well, I, yeah, I appreciate it. So uh, we'll talk to you soon. All right. Thanks. Have a good night. You too. All right. Bye-bye.